Hi, my name is David and in this video series I want to show you how you can create your own GitHub action, how to release it and how to automate the release. In this very first episode I'm going to show you how you create your first GitHub action and how you can test it locally from within your repository. And without further ado, let's dive right in. I've already went ahead and created a GitHub repository um, that I based on the node template. So you see a git ignore here already. And I've also went ahead and checked this repository out and opened it in my Visual Studio code. So we can start right away. The first thing you need to do if you want to create a GitHub action is create a so-called metadata file. The metadata file is a file called action.yaml. So it's a YAML file that needs to live in the root of your repository. This file indicates to GitHub certain, well, as the name suggests, metadata that is important for not only GitHub, but also for your users to know and understand your action. The most important thing, of course, is a name. This name that you give here is also the name that is going to appear in the marketplace if you decide to publish your action to the marketplace. And we will do this, of course, later. For this reason, this name has to be unique. It cannot be taken by another action, even if it lives in another organization or if another user created it. So make sure that your action name is actually unique. In my case, let's go with Dave's YouTube action or demo action, because I'm fairly confident that this name does not exist yet. What we can also give here is a description. It's always a good idea to let your users know what your action is actually doing. So in our case, we are going to use this action to create persons. So this action creates persons. Last but not least, we have to tell GitHub what kind of action this is. There are three different kinds right now. There's JavaScript actions which run on Node.js and where you define the logic in JavaScript files. There are Docker actions, which, well, <laughs> how the name indicates, are Docker container or Docker images um, that you build together and where GitHub will actually execute the action logic in the Docker container. And last but not least, there are composite actions, which are not really actions per se, but how the name indicates again, are actions that are composed out of other actions. In this series, I'm going to focus on JavaScript actions as, in my opinion, they are the, the easiest one to show, but I might do other videos where I show the other kind or the other types of actions. So in order to tell GitHub that this action is supposed to be a JavaScript action, we need the runs keyword. And in the runs keyword, we are using node 16. So we are telling GitHub that in order to run this action, it should use node.js with the version of 16, which right now is the LTS release of um, node.js. And we also need to give it a main file. And in our case, we are going to do this in the source index.js directory. This is the main entry point of the action where all our logic is to be executed. Of course, we can require within the index.js like with any other um, JavaScript application or Node.js application, but this, this is really the entry point to our action. And that's all we require for now to put into the metadata file. So let's create our logic, which, well, we just indicated is in the source directory and is called index.js. And for the time being, all I want to do is, well, do a little hello world just to check that our action works as intended. And that's basically all already. With these two files, you have the most simple approach to uh, create a GitHub action. But now, of course, we want to test it somehow. And uh, what way of better test an action than through actions or through GitHub workflows? So let's create a workflow to test our action. So we need the .github folder, we need a workflows folder, and we need a workflow which we are going to name test. Um, we are going to run this workflow on any push for now because, well, you know, we don't have we don't have another thing that we can trigger on. Then of course we need to give it a job which we are going to name test. This test job runs on Ubuntu latest for now, which suffices, and which has the steps. Well, first of all of course, to check out the repository and Copilot is so kind of already suggesting it to me because this is the first thing we always do in actions, right? We check out the repository. Next, we need to set up node ourselves and Copilot again uh, is ahead of me and kind of suggests this action. 
because of course we need node 16 in order to run this action. Note that this is only necessarily because we want to test this action locally in the repository. Later, if you release the action, this step is not necessary as we told GitHub in our metadata file that, well, node 16 is the, the infrastructure that we require in order for us to run this action. Last but not least, how do we actually execute the action logic now? Of course, we could run node index.js, but th this would not really test our action. This would only test our action logic. Luckily, we can do a little trick here, or it's not a trick, but it's, it's, it's as intended by GitHub. We can just use the users keyword and point it, well, with a relative path to this very repository. And this tells GitHub, well, check for the action YAML file in this very repository and execute this action. And that's all we require. Let's go ahead and commit. So feed, let's call this initial commit or initial feature. Commit the entire thing, push it up to GitHub. And then if we switch back to the web and actually look at the actions tab, we see that our workflow was triggered by our push. And if all is good, we should be seeing our action executed. Perfect, it was already a success. And if we look into the logs, we see that, well, hello world, perfect. We locally tested our very first GitHub action. But so far, it's still quite boring, right? Probably you don't want to write a, a action that, that you know, doesn't take any inputs and, and doesn't do anything else but, but creating. So, well, yeah, of course you can do more with actions and let me show you how you can, for example, use inputs to, you know, further make your action more flexible for, for your users. The first thing we need to do is go back into our metadata file and tell GitHub which kind of inputs we are expecting in this action. And we do so by the inputs keyword, which is a, um, which is a dictionary, a YAML dictionary, so a key value pair. And you can see it again by Copilot, um, how this looks like. Let me still type it down because I want to name this input person. What we need is a description. And well, I'll just autocomplete what Copilot gives me here. A description again to let our users know what input is expected here. Then we have the option to mark this input as required. Um, so we let our users know that, well, we kind of rely on this input to be given in order for our action to work. If a required input is not given by a user, GitHub will present a sophisticated error message to the users that, well, this input is actually missing. This can be circumvented by giving a default value. And this is what Copilot did for us here in this line. Um, where if the user does not give us a value, just use this default value here. And actually, I think world is quite boring. So let's go with Mona Lisa Octocat, the little mascot of GitHub. This is the first step. Now we told GitHub what kind of input we expect. How do we actually read this input? And this is also quite straightforward. GitHub will put all the inputs that it gets into the environment when it runs our action. So in the case of JavaScript, we can access this environment through process.env and the env variables that GitHub provides with us always follow the same pattern. They start with input, lowercase, and uh, not lowercase, sorry, uh, low dash, and then the name of the input. In our case, this is person. As we named this, if we switch back to the, to the metadata file, we named this person. It's that, but just in uppercase. And so now we can go ahead and we can convert this into a template literal. And instead of world, we actually create the person here. Now let's test this entire thing. And actually to test it, let's do two things. Test the default input, but also test this action with an input that we give ourselves. And to do this, we switch back into our workflow file. Um, and we actually execute our action twice now. Once without any inputs to test if the default input is working. And again, now, whoops, sorry, with the with keyword, which where we can then say give the person, and not we're not gonna create ourselves or myself, we are going to create Batman in this case. So let's commit this again. Add input, push this entire thing. Our 
workflow was now executed. And if we have a look at the workflow output, we see that with the default value, it greets Mona Lisa Octocad perfect. And if we actually give it an input, it will greet Batman. Awesome. So <laughs> basically it worked. We handled our first input. Of course, this way of handling input through environment variables, it, it has certain caveats. And, and, and actually there are easier ways than to execute environment variables directly. And the easier ways is, and this is I want to show you as a last thing, the Actions Toolkit. The Actions Toolkit is a set of NPM packages that make lives or our lives as action developers, at least for JavaScript actions, way easier. So I am also going to put this link into the description. Look at all the packages that the toolkit offers to you as they might be helpful for your very own action. In this video, I'm just going to present the actions core package, which also lives on GitHub. Let's go over here, which will make exactly this thing easier, reading inputs in a little bit of a nicer way. And for this, we need to install this action or uh, sorry, input, install this package as a NPM package. So let's get back into our code. And the first thing that we actually need to do before we are ready to install NPM packages is, well, make this entire project an NPM project. So we go with NPM init dash Y. This will create the package JSON for us. I'm just going to do a little change here and change the license to MIT. And then we can actually install the actions core. And if we go back into our index.js, we can now require, if I write it correctly, require the core package or the actions core package. And from the core package, we now can have a, a, a lot of different things. It will help us. Again, I encourage you have a look at it yourself, play around with it yourself. I'm only going to show you in this video how to get the input and it's straightforward. We again just have to give it a name and then it will grab that input from the environment for us. And as you can see, this is a little bit of a nicer um, um, way of writing this. The core package, as I said, has, has more features that, you know, make just things that we do with actions all the time so much easier. So I encourage you to use it. Now, before we can commit and test this, we actually have to adjust our workflow a little bit in that we have to now uh, sorry, not this one, but the test workflow in that we now have to actually install the node modules um, because we are relying on them to be present, right? So we have to execute npm ci as a step between setting up node and actually executing our actions. So let's go ahead and do this. Feed adds actions core package. Let's commit the entire thing, publish it again. Hopefully this time it will be faster. <clears throat> Perfect. And let's go back into our repository. Workflow was already triggered. Let's wait a little bit for the job to be started. And perfect. You can see already that it worked. We installed the core package now. And as before, um, we are now treating the right persons only that we didn't take the input directly from the environment variable, but through the core package. And that's, that's it for now. This is um, all you need to create your very first action. You could already use this action privately if you tagged it or, or in other workflows. So this is pretty great, but probably you want to release it to the marketplace. And this is exactly what we are going to do in the next video. I hope you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I'm happy to see you in the next episode.